Well, that happened. I wish it didn't happen, but it still happened. What I'm talking about is the 2018 edition of Double Double E Backlash, presented by Raw and SmackDown Life. This being the you know best of both worlds. No copyright to uh, Miley Cyrus, aka Hannah Montana. But uh, the first ever, well, from now on, the dual brand, every pay-per-view, every special event, will be both Raw and SmackDown. And this sucked. One thing I will say about WrestleMania is at least the first half was somewhat of enjoyable. And the second half was just trash. This was just boring and trash. Like, if I could compare this pay-per-view to any pay-per-view... In like recent memory, like the last several years, I'll go to like Capital Punishment bad. Because Capital Punishment had like one good moment. I thought that was like what CM Punk versus. God, who the hell was CM Punk facing that night? CM Punk versus whomever. I forgot. That was like the best part of the night. This sucked. Yeah, there was one good part of this night, and that was the opener. And no, I'm not going to cover Ruby Riot versus Bailey because I could care less about knockoff Paige, no less porn star of her, versus the little Sesame Street kid Bailey. Yippee! Ruby Riot won because lol, Bailey's a jobber. Okay, so Miz versus Seth Rollins, easily the best, only good part of the night. A uh, good match between the two. The only thing I will say that was sketchy was that uh, Seth did. Uh, excuse me, he did kick out of two uh, Skull Crusher finales. I know if this was a certain other Shield mem former Shield member that did this, internet fanboy Smarks would be losing their minds. Oh, by the way, oh, hi Smarks, how's your sex life? Before I forget, I almost forgot about that. Goodness gracious, what is wrong with me? But, anyways, uh, yeah, if he did that, you all would lose your mind. But if Seth did it, it's magically okay. Because, well, it's Seth Rollins, and I'm a fan of both Seth and Roman, but I'm going to call it Spade a Spade, okay? It's simple as that. Either way, decent match. You obviously know who's going to win the match since Miz is on SmackDown, Rollins is on Raw, duh. Uh, Rollins wins. Okay, fine. Moving on. And sadly, the show just takes a big nosedive from here. Okay. You have Alexa Bliss versus Nia Jax. Part two of this anti-bullying thing. And the funny thing is, the most entertaining part of this feud has been Alexa Bliss and her Bliss moment. You know, knockoff growing up Bella segments, whatever, because they're so ridiculous. They're hilarious. Like, the one where apparently Nia Jax supposedly left, uh, well, she was like walking with Alexa Bliss, and they both saw a homeless woman. And Alexa was going to give her burrito bowl or whatever to to the homeless woman, but the homeless, but the uh, Nia Jax stole from the homeless woman and ate it. And Nia Jax made fun of Alexa Bliss in at Disney World or something because Alexa wanted to ride the teacup because it was just a teacup. A cup. You sit in a cup. <laughs> I'm sorry, but that evil cheerleader is hilarious. Anyways, um, so this match was not hilarious, though, because, God, um, listen, I'm a fan of both these ladies. But the difference of how Nia Jax reacts to the crowd and how Alexa Bliss reacts to, you know, reacts to the crowd, meaning is over with the crowd, is night and freaking day, okay? Nia Jax is getting booed. And she's a big fan. I don't know if this is the whole, like, oh, because we still think of you as Roman's cousin, believe it. Or just because it just... And I think it's also the fact that with Nia, it's like, she's against a woman who's clearly over. And I know Lex Bliss was be the heel, you know, again, the evil, evil little cheerleader, Holly Queen one way. But, you know, the goddess. But, you know, Bliss is over. Nia, not so much. And I think some of that also has to do with the fact that, you know, WWE pushed her to the moon for a little while and then started losing to freaking, like, Sasha and getting her ass kicked by Asuka and started losing all these random matches that she shouldn't have been losing. She should have been dominating and winning them. You know, I know someone on Twitter who, you know, I consider, like, a Twitter friend, I guess you could say, uh, he even said that Nia Jax should be, like, the awesome Kong. She should. With her size... Easy. It's not difficult to make a monster out of her. But of course, you know, and the more I thought about it, too, watching this match said on Twitter that WWE has this ass backwards. Like, 
the little person and the big person. The little person make fun of the big person. Like, I guess it's somewhat more realistic, but I don't know. It just feels weird. There was no Naya retain. Hmm. Wonder what they're going to do with uh, Naya. I'm going to pray, thank God. Um, moving on to the my Kim. I said this on Twitter. All right. Can you imagine if you hadn't watched wrestling, particularly WWE, in 10 years? You turn back on, and you see Randy Orton and Jeff Hardy are feuding in 2018. These two were feuding over the WWE title at one point. And they're feuding over the U.S. bill. Anyways, Jeff Hardy versus Randy Orton. Kind of a nothing match. Uh, I mean, was it atrocious? Not necessarily. I mean, both these guys can work well, but it just well, it was just there. You know what I mean? Uh, Jeff hits a big swan time bomb. One, two, three. Jeff retains. Makes sense. Orton doesn't need the belt again. And Jeff, I don't know. Maybe he's ready to lose a belt to Sienna Almas, a.k.a. Alberto Del Rio 2.0. Because, God forbid, the only reason why people care about Sienna Almas is because of Selena Vega, a.k.a. Thea Trinidad, a.k.a. Rosita. And I told people from the very beginning she was talented, but now, now you all want to jump on the bandwagon about how she's talented and good. Get out of here. So we're going on to, oh my god, what the hell was this? Uh, some stupid segment in the ring. Elias is in there. Who wants to walk with them? I like Elias. Elias is cool. But they're slowly but surely killing Elias. New Day came out for whatever reason, even though they're both on separate brands. Yeah, whatever. New Day came out, and then Bobby Roode came out, and then Noe Jose came out. And then Bobby Roode hit the glorious DDT on freaking Elias, and that was it. That was literally it. Oh my god. Then you have Big Cass, a.k.a. Big Ass, versus Daniel Bryan. I know Big Cass is a big Donald Trump supporter. Anybody knows me, I'm, you know. <laughs> but lay off of the orange tan, bro. Seriously, Big Cass, Big Orange, Big Orange Ass, God. When you're tanner than your ex-girlfriend with the freaking orange tan, that's just scary. Anyways, him versus Daniel Bryan. I don't get this. I mean... I don't mind Daniel Bryan, but if he's supposed to be an underdog, shouldn't he like be getting his ass kicked by Big Cass, and then either A, lose a match, or B, barely win the match? Something like that, or a long match or something. I know Big Cass can't work a long match, though. But, I mean, this doesn't seem like an underdog win. I mean, I know Cass, after the match, attacked Daniel Bryan. Woo! The feud continues. But... <clears throat> Like, this was, eh. Again, it was nothing match, really. And then, oh boy. <laughs> it's about the life. Uh, women's title match. By the way, neither tag titles were on the line, or tag team champions of paper, which is really weird. Anyway, met the women's title match, Charlotte Flair versus Carmella. Carmella. <laughs> James Ellsworth. So, <laughs> what the hell was this? <laughs> so I was thinking to myself, if Carmella's going to retain, you're probably going to have the Iconics. The former knows the Iconic duo, a.k.a. Peyton Royce and Billy K, a.k.a. the lesbian Aussies, because let's face it, they're just way too close with each other. Anyways, um, Carmella versus Charlotte. What the hell was this? I swear, the theme of tonight was like headlocks. Orton, headlock. Carmella. Headlock. Samoa Joe. Headlock. Carmella. Headlock and chinlock. It was just, oh my god. I don't get it. You don't want, you have to rest. I get it. Not to, dun -dun 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 -dun. but freaking, that was just seemed like the theme of most of these matches. And Oh my gosh. Carmella wins because she blocked a figure four because I guess Charlotte went for a moonsault, but then her knee gave out. And then Carmella attacked the knee and won. I was like, I was like, I don't know how to describe this. It was like pretty much whenever Seth Rollins lost a match right after he came back from his injury, when he was like, oh no, my knee, my knee. Like, this was the same thing pretty much. And I was like, what the hell is this? I. Got <sighs> to protect Charlotte, I guess. I don't know. Oh my god. Okay. 
So, at first, I was along with a lot of the uh, smarky bandwagon going, Oh, this should be the main event. <laughs> Shinsuke Nakamura. <laughs> Nakamura versus the team. <laughs> The file for the WWE Championship, and I thought, okay, this is for the WWE title, maybe this should be an event. Even though their match at WrestleMania sucked monkey balls, and their match at the Royal Rumble, or the Greatest Royal Rumble, from what I heard, was like just as bad, if not worse. And this was holy freaking damn. I never, ever want to hear. Anyone with a straight face to say they want to see Nakamura versus AJ Styles in the WWE ever freaking again. And I don't give a crap about this whole, Ooh, we put on a classic of Japan. <laughs> it's not Japan, this is the WWE. Okay, get that straight. I'm sure they had a great match in Japan. From I heard that match lasted from 45 minutes to an hour. What the hell is wrong with you all for watching a match that long? <laughs> Uh, but anyways, more power to you. Uh, anywho, this was terrible. All right, once again, this was terrible. All this was was just AJ getting his ass kicked, Nakamura with like eight billion low blows, and then finally the ending of the match was both these guys hit a low blow on each other, and then oh, it's about to be no disqualification. Neither guy can answer a 10 count, so you're winner and still WWE Champion AJ Styles. And I was like, why? I mean, you know this is not over. Because I was thinking, okay, maybe they're going to do Joe versus Styles and them two have good chemistry in TNA, aka okay, Impact Wrestling Brother. So maybe they can do something good. But now all of a sudden they're I don't know, they want to do another Nakamura versus Styles match. I'm done. <laughs> I am freaking done, man. Like this is uh, how can you do it's just so freaking stupid. And I Nakamura is so freaking overrated too. Holy goddamn. This guy is just a freaking entrance. Alright. I don't care about Ooh, you're so good in Japan. Okay, you're so good in Japan. Whoopee! This is WWE. He's not good now. He's lazy as hell. He doesn't care. And he is just freaking overrated, overhyped, boring, and just dull. At least AJ looks like he cares. And freaking Nakamura is just... God. And then you had some freaking random tag team match player. Because since the tag totals were on the line, you need a tag match. Braun Strowman and Bobby Lashley, Albert son of a bitch, versus Sami Zayn, ooh, ooh, the driver, and his fat bear boyfriend, Kevin Owens. Oh my word. Why was this here? Besides filler, why was this here? Just have an excuse to have Braun on the card? It's too bad, too, because Bobby Lashley, you know, TNA slash Impact Wrestling proved that you can do something well with Bobby Lashley. He's good in the ring. Just picture Brock Lesnar, but better. And a little bit smaller. That's what Bobby Lashley is. The guy can at least cut a promo by himself. No, let's just put him in a random tag team with Braun Strowman, because they're both big dudes. I think Sami Zayn ditched Kevin Owens in this match for whatever... I don't freaking know. Maybe he wanted to drive someone from the arena early to home because it's a school night or something. I don't freaking know. So yeah, Bobby Lashley and Braun Strowman win. Ooh, I care. And then finally in the middle event. <laughs> Samoa Joe versus Samoa Joe. Excuse me. Samoa Joe versus Just Joe. <laughs> Roman Reigns versus Samoa Joe. Pepper Curl. Oh my god, this was your main event. And I thought, okay. These two have obviously had matches before on Raw. And I believe they've had, have they had a man, match at a pay-per-view before this? I'm not entirely sure, but I know they've had matches one-on-one, -on -one, at least, together. Um, and they've been pretty good. Pretty enjoyable. Not bad. This was just there. Freaking Samoa Joe. Excuse me. Samoa Joe, or just Joe. Putting... Baby doll, girl, the big doll, baby girl. In a headlock for like eight years. Oh my god. And Roman Reigns hits the <laughs> Superman punch. 
Spear, and that's it, folks. Big dog wins, and that's it for Backlash. Oh, my sweet baby Jesus, was this a fail? Like, I don't know if this was just WWE not caring because they invested so much in their time and the money and the, and the jet lag, I guess, from freaking uh, the Greatest Royal Rumble of Saudi Arabia. So thank God it did not cover. I was going to cover that show, and I was like, this show was bad. Like, nope, like 50 people maybe watched it that weren't from Saudi Arabia. And yeah, <laughs> who cares? At least WWE has, what, six weeks to build up for Money in the Bank? Okay, they have some time. I don't even know what they're going to do. Are they going to have, like, what they originally did with one Raw Money in the Bank match, one SmackDown Live Money in the Bank match, or are they going to do something stupid and have, like, three contestants or four contestants from Raw and three, three or four contestants from SmackDown in one match? I don't know. Hopefully it's the first rather than the latter of the two. But, oh my lord. This show sucked. Uh, the WWE right now sucks. And I get it. It's after WrestleMania. This is when it goes mm, until SummerSlam. But even around that time, it still sucks. It's not improving. If anything, it's declining. Just like the ratings. Just like the money. Just like the revenue. Just like the attendance. It's all decline. So. Oof. I'm telling you, Impact Wrestling looks really good right now. <laughs> to this and I've just seen like little highlights on YouTube. It's like, oh, so and so put somebody in a casket. And I'm like, what the hell? <laughs> oh, but anyways, this show trash.